Whenever maintenance on equipment is required, a work order ticket is created for the equipment. Maintenance tasks, which include any PM services or repairs, are added to the work order ticket. Whenever the ticket is closed, the maintenance tasks get added to the equipment's maintenance history. To view a list of existing work orders, click Work Orders on the left-hand side menu. On the top of the work orders list, there is a search box, which you can use to search by, for example, a work order number or a unit ID. On the right-hand side, there are drop-down boxes where you can choose to filter by a work order status, such as open or closed. You can also filter by the equipment's primary location. To create a new work order record, from this work order screen, you can hit the plus sign on the left-hand side, or you can click on the blue New button on the top right. A few other convenient ways of creating work order tickets is via the Home screen. There is a list of equipment with tasks that are due. On each row, there is an Issue Work Order button. Clicking on this will create a work order ticket for this specific unit and any tasks that are due. You can also create one directly from the equipment list. So if we click Equipment on the left, we can see that our unit here, uh, this 001, has three tasks that are due. So if we want to go ahead and create a work order for this unit, we can click on the Action button on the right-hand side, and we'll click Issue WO for Issue Work Order. We will get this pop-up screen. This is the Generate Work Order screen. We have an option here if we want to make work orders for just the one unit. We can also do it for units from a specific location or all equipment that have any tasks soon due or overdue. Underneath, you have options to create a completely blank work order. So this is if you do not want to carry over, let's say, for example, these three tasks for unit 001. If you want to start out with a completely blank ticket, you would choose this option. The middle option, include due and soon due tasks, will, will include anything that's orange, which would be soon due, and anything that's red, which is overdue. The third option, include due tasks only, will put on the ticket only items that are red or overdue, and it will skip anything in orange, which is soon due, but not quite overdue just yet. For this example, we'll go ahead and use the middle option, include due and soon due tasks, and we'll leave the top drop down for selected equipment. To go ahead and create the ticket, we'll hit the generate button on the right hand side. This brings us to the new work order screen. On the top left, a work order number is already added for us. Um, if you need to, you can overwrite this number by typing something new in. This is priority for the work order. Most of the time you'll leave it set to normal. However, if you're making these tickets ahead of time, uh, let's say you're going to take care of them next week and you wanna know which tickets need to be done sooner, you can set the ones with higher priority as high and then ones that can be done at a later time that aren't necessarily urgent, you can set them to low. In the dates box on the left-hand side, the scheduled date is already filled in for us. There is a due date, which you can set if you are creating the ticket today and you need it to be done, let's say, for example, by the end of the week. On our work order list, you'll be able to see the due date and say, okay, this particular work order needs to be done uh, soon because the due date is coming up. Started, this is the date that you started working on this ticket. So whenever, the let's say, the equipment came in for repair or for maintenance, uh, the day that you're actually working on the unit, that would be the started time or started date. And then completed, this is grayed out currently, but when you set the ticket to complete status or when you close it out, that'll be populated for you to let you know when you finished these maintenance tasks. Underneath that, there is an assignee section and you can assign this to an internal employee or technician or to a third party vendor and basically what this means is who is responsible for this ticket? 
who's going to be completing these maintenance tasks. Uh, if you have a specific technician, you can put their name here, or let's say if you have a maintenance foreman, or if you have multiple, you can put their name in here and say, okay, they're responsible for this, and then they can divvy it out to other technicians to complete the ticket. Underneath of that, there's a miscellaneous details section. Uh, these, of course, are all optional, but you can fill these in if you would like. Uh, type, this is normally used for, uh, we've got preventive or repair here, but you can also use it for if it's like, a, let's say, an electrical type of repair or if it's body work, you know, whatever uh, maintenance that you're doing on this equipment. Cost center is generally who is responsible for paying for the maintenance. So let's say the sales department or another department. PO number, so we have a purchase order system uh, that's used to order parts from vendors. So if you have a PO number where let's say you had to order a, a part to finish this work order, you can either choose from the drop down box, which is existing purchase orders, or you can just type any number in here that you would like. Likewise, if there is an invoice number related to this ticket, you can type that in. And then underneath we have some custom boxes, which are basically if, if you have information that you want to put on this ticket uh, that don't fit in any of the other boxes, then you can use the custom box to type in any value you would like. On the right hand side, notice that in my maintenance tab, because I picked that middle option on that generate screen, my soon due items and my overdue items automatically came over onto the screen. If you want to add something new to the maintenance tab, go ahead and click on the add button on the bottom. The new maintenance service screen appears. On the top, you have the option of preventive, repair, or other. Most of the time you will use preventive or repair. Other is used for really special circumstances where you don't want the cost of this task to apply to either a PM or repair on your reporting. Preventive means that we're pulling a task name from our PM schedule. So if we click on the drop down box for task, I have a transmission task in here. It's not one that's currently due, so it's not already on my ticket, but I can go ahead and add it if this is something I'm going to do now. For repair, this is something that's not normal uh, preventive maintenance. So if you needed to replace a, a light bulb or just anything that falls outside of normal maintenance that you're doing on this ticket, you can use the repair option. If I hit the drop down box for the task name, it'll pull a list of common repairs, which you can go into the settings and add or modify this list. If nothing here fits, you can actually type in to this box whatever you would like. For this example, we'll stick with preventive and I'll pick that transmission task here. Underneath, I have a part cost and labor cost box. So there's a couple of ways you can use these boxes. I can either simply type in a number into each and tell the system how much this particular task cost me, or you can use the add part and add labor buttons. So I'll show those. So if we had hit the add part button here, I can choose a part number from my list. So from my inventory, I have a test part here that I'll go ahead and add. And it fills everything in for me, including the unit cost, which you can override if you need to. You can tell the system how much of the part you've used and then hit save. And now my part is associated with this task. If you have any part kits set up, you can also use the add kit button. That's if you have a group of parts that you'd like to add at once. For labor cost, I can go ahead and hit add labor. I can choose if it's an internal employee or a vendor, and then I can pick the name. So we'll leave it on employee and I can pick from my employee list. So this would be the person who's actually completing this task. The labor rate's already populated from the employee information. I can simply go here and say how long it took and click Save. So now I have my part and I have my technician. If I have any notes about this particular task or service that I'm adding, uh, you can type it in the notes box here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. So notice that my transmission task is here and I have the total uh, combined parts and labor added to this task. 
Uh, let's say, let's do one more. So we'll do air filter. If I want to edit a task to change something about it, you can either double click the line or you can hit the pencil button on the right to edit. So let's say we'll go ahead and type in some numbers here. So I have a total for these two. On the bottom right, notice that with all the tax and everything, it's already tallied up how much this ticket is going to cost. On the top, there are parts and labor tabs. So notice that we, we added a part for our transmission task. So if I hit the parts tab, that part's already in there for me. And likewise, the labor entry is here as well. Most of the time, you're going to be adding parts and labor directly on the task itself. However, if you have a part or let's say labor that was done that you do not wish to associate with a specific task, you can hit the add part on the parts tab or add labor button on the labor tab to add them to the ticket, not necessarily to the maintenance task. But again, most of the time you'll go through and add it directly to the task itself. So now that we've added pretty much everything that we need to at this point, we're going to go ahead and close the ticket. Before we do so, I'm going to go over a few other items. So on the top right, notice these boxes here. So these are the work order statuses. So if the work order is, let's say, in progress and it's being worked on actively by somebody right now, uh, I can leave it in progress and then save it. And then on my work order management screen, uh, I can see the ticket on there. Well, actually, let's go ahead and try it. So I'll leave this in progress. I'll hit save. When I go to my work orders list, notice that this is the ticket that I just made and it's marked with a status of in progress. On hold, this is generally used if, let's say, you're waiting on a part or you're waiting on something to finish the ticket. And then complete means that everything is done and I'm ready to close this ticket out. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll click complete here. It's gonna ask me the day that I finished it. And it's also going to ask me the meter of the unit at the moment that it's, uh, that it's finished. So we'll say 71. And at this point, the ticket is done. I can go ahead and click on save on the bottom and all of these tasks will be recorded to my equipment's history. Before we hit save, on the top right, to the right of the complete button, there's this button with the three dots. If we click on this, I have the option to print the work order out. You can also create a purchase order. If you're doing third-party billing, you can do an invoice and you can email. But for the most part, most of the time you will be printing the work order ticket out if you need a paper copy. If I click on print work order, I'll have a report viewer come up with a preview and it has everything about the work order that was done and then I can hit the print button here and print it out. So now we'll go ahead and click on the save button. So the ticket is closed out, it's completed. I'm gonna save it. Notice that it dropped off my work orders list. That's because I'm looking at outstanding or open tickets. If I click on closed, I can search for my unit number. And here's the ticket that we just completed as an example. Also, if we go back to our equipment list now, look at the details for my truck, my 001. I'm going to go to Actions, and I'm going to go to History. It'll show here my work order ticket that we just made, the meter reading when it was completed, and the maintenance performed, and the price. And if I want more information about which tasks specifically were done, I can hit the plus sign here and see exactly what was completed for this unit. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel or for more information about our software products, you can visit our website at mtcpro.com.